Since the dawn of computing, these once immense machines have revolutionized our lives. Everything from taking man to the moon, to modeling the world around us. For a while, computers were out of the public eye. They were just too big and too expensive. But then a revolution came in the form of the personal computer. Since then, computers have been getting smaller and more powerful. And in recent years, we've begun to see a shift. The computer's latest form has merged with the smartphone. For a time, they were too weak to be a PC replacement. Until now. I'd like you to sit back, relax, and watch, and see if the Galaxy Note 2 can finally replace the personal computer. So, the equipment I'm going to use to do this monumental task. I'm going to use Samsung's official HML adapter, which is different from the first Galaxy Note, as well as an HDMI cable. This cable is going to plug into a 29-inch Samsung LED monitor. This is going to serve as our display for our PC, which of course is our smartphone. This is all going to be plugged into a 5.1 surround sound speaker system, and the actual processor is going to be the Samsung Galaxy Note 2. For input, we're going to use an Apple keyboard and an Apple Magic Mouse. First things first, so how is using the internet in such a setup? Well, straight up, navigating around the user interface is a lot more satisfying. Keyboard input is more responsive, and the mouse is better too. If we scroll over to the web browser, with Flash installed, you'll be able to see that everything runs smoothly as it should. If we push the mouse to the extremity of the web browser, either up or down, we'll be able to scroll. This is kind of like AirView, but only works on some browsers. We can obviously go to full screen if you want to, and this just mimics the PC-like viewing experience for YouTube videos. To access the multi-window feature, using the magic mouse, we can hold down on the right-hand side of the magic mouse, and then click, and this toggles the quick application menu. For different mouse manufacturers, these gestures will obviously be different. So as you've seen earlier, we can jump into an email and pop up a floating browser if we want to. But what if we want more than just the pop-up browser? We want something more full-featured that has full flash and full desktop experiences. Well, there's an application called Floating Browser, which is just this. So on the left-hand side, you can see that we have a YouTube video playing. and the right-hand side, you can see that we're searching for something. Now, if we close everything down, you'll be able to see that everything is still running inside the background. So, so all these things are indeed happening together in real time. So if you're using Skype and you're in the situation where you have to pull up some information while talking to someone, it's quite easy. You just have the web browser sitting there on top of Skype so you can pull up wherever you need to. Video camera now works uh, while outputted to HDMI, so it's kind of pretty cool. Now you can video chat if you want to over the net on a full HD monitor. And if you do turn the phone uh, towards the monitor, you get some pretty cool inception kind of effects. Uh, it's pretty trippy. On a full PC operating system, it's usually possible to listen to some music, say streaming off SoundCloud, while browsing a website such as Facebook. On mobile operating systems, the music usually stops streaming once you change tabs or get out of the application. But with the floating browser, we can just stream the music while browsing the web normally, just like a regular PC. So let's take a look at the CPU load. Under normal usage, you can see that the loading on all the four cores is usually under 50%. But that's normal usage. What if we pushed it to the maximum? What if we tried to put as many applications running at the same time as we could? How would that look like? Let's take a look. A few footnotes to mention before I describe the testing. Unfortunately, for some unknown reason, Pop-Up Player doesn't work when it's connected to HDMI out. This is pretty disappointing, but nevertheless, I went along to the Play Store and downloaded another video player that could do multiple windows. I decided to use that for the testing. So this test is basically taking advantage of the four cores in the Galaxy Note 2. We're just going to see how much loading the processor can take before things start to get messy. What I mean by messy is things slowing down, getting choppy, crashing, just things like that. Unfortunately, this video player app can only open two videos at once. Alright, so let's get started. So let's get back to our web browser. We'll play a flash video and then we'll see what happens when we add more and more things. So we've got two videos playing in the background and a flash video which is actually more CPU intensive than just playing a vi video natively. And then if we open another tab we'll see that we have the 
uh, two videos playing and the CPU usage is now sitting at half, except CPU 3 just spiked up there when we opened the second one just to get things running smoothly. And then um, things were smooth at this point, everything was, uh, was not too bad, but then when we open the third browser we see the CPU spike up to almost full, then go back to three quarters, and if we open a web page in full view it actually is still smooth, no problems there, but then the CPU starts to get a bit heavy when all the videos are buffering at the same time. And then when we do open the fourth browser and then have four flash videos and the two uh, native videos playing at the same time, the CPU is stuck almost three quarters to full and uh, things do get a bit choppy and uh, not as smooth as you would have natively. And don't forget this is all HDMI out as well guys, so uh, this is uh, pretty impressive. The strange thing is, both native videos didn't show any signs of choppiness or lagging at all. They were actually just standard, so uh, it is doing a good job at multitasking there. Alright, well that's all well and good, so let's move over to productivity. We're going to use Kingsoft Office once again, and we're going to try the copy and pasting test. Uh, this failed on the original Galaxy Note because of lack of RAM, but let's see how it fares here. So we're going to use a Dolphin Browser because we can use that option to save as. And let's search for something interesting instead of being boring. I'll choose cats and lettuce instead of lettuce. Uh, so we've got this interesting picture of a cat. Don't even ask, I have no idea why someone would do that. But it's saved, so we can go into our browser, we can search for it, and there we have it. And we copy to the clipboard and try and paste. But once again, it seems as Kingsoft Office has closed itself, so it's just a policy that the application seems to have. So we can do it within the application, so we can go browse for our picture, and we have success for the first time ever. So if you don't know already, this test failed on the original Galaxy Note due to lack of RAM. So the Galaxy Note 2 does indeed fix this issue. So just finishing up with the word editing, we can wrap our text anywhere we choose. So big deal, word editing. Everyone knows that most things can do that.